Jerry Moore. Jerry Moore. people welcome to the sn95 power channel today is d-day today is the day that we installed that chevy volt fan with this um amazon three row radiator in this car so a couple of things we have to do first um basically we got to drain fluid get everything that's going to be in the way disconnected and um that includes some electrical components that i have um, pretty straightforward. So I'm really not going to record the basic part of this installation. The stuff I will record is more of the um, electrical wiring because the great thing about using this brushless fan is it's a soft start. So you won't have this huge inrush of current when the fans kick on, when the CCRM commands it, like with the Mark 8 fans, I think some of the that fan can draw up to um, a 60 amp surge of current. It could possibly um, blow a fuse, but with this setup, it's a soft start. And I, I, I believe that at high speed, they're gonna draw less than 30 amps current. So we can hook this directly up to the CCRM and have the CCRM cut these fans on when they need to be on. And we have the AC on and you go wide and throttle, it will kick the fans off. So all that stuff we won't have to worry about. We'll let the CCRM um, and the computer handle all that, but we need to wire this. So it has um, communication between the two and I'm gonna show you how to do that, fairly simple. So let's get the car in the air, drain some fluid and we'll get back to it in um, some steps. So like I say, I'm not gonna record every single step of this because it's just really, the first part of this is just removing the old radiator and dropping the new radiator in. All right, so I got the old radiate radiator out. What I want to do is um, do a fit test first. Um, dimension wise, I think we should be fine. By this being a run row, you see that this um, stock radiator has that little recess right there. And when you go to a multi row, it doesn't have that recess because they use that for extra rows. I shouldn't have a problem, but let's um, fit test it before I get my hopes up. All right, so we're good on the fitment side of things. This is not mounted and it's hanging forward, but we got plenty of room for this. It's, it's to the point where this thing is gonna blow so much air. I gotta make sure all of my header wrap is nice and secure because it could be an issue where it might blow that stuff off. All right, so I'm, this is hard to um, reproduce to tell you the difference in um, power between these two fans. So I'm gonna try my best, but we're gonna go to a head-to-head -head battle. The Chevy Bolt fans versus the brushless 300 watts Chevy Bolt fans versus a 200, I think this is 225. Let's just call it 240 versus the 225. A Durali and a Spall. Both of these are 12 inches. This is actually has more restriction because this is a three row, it's a thicker radiator. And this is um, a stock OEM one. So I'm gonna try to reproduce this as best as I can. I'm gonna use the official SN95 power polishing pad test to show the difference. So let's get it started. No slouch by any means. I think in the majority of uh, people's cars, this would be more than sufficient 
to cool your car. Um, stop radiator, single row. It's not a huge restriction of airflow coming through that radiator. Like I say, with these on my car with the air on, if it's under 90, it's fine. But when we get into these mid 90s with the air conditioner on, this setup is just not able to handle um, what this car needs. So let's switch over to this guy and run the same test. All right, opponent number two, I've got my PWM controller hooked up. We're gonna put this at three duty cycle, which is full bore. Slow ramp. So here's the other cool thing about this that I like. I'm working in the garage now, so if I want to kind of cool this garage off. So I can kind of use this to cool off the garage. Get a little airflow in this garage. I think I this setting with the charger on this battery, it might not kill this battery. All right, so you can see the difference between the, well, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's, it's real hard to tell on camera, but it is a huge difference in draw air pool between this fan and that fan. And not that this fan setup is a slouch. Like this is a really good setup and would probably work for of a lot of you watching this video right now but yeah um like hey I, I cannot knock this setup it um would do the job i think for the majority of people but with my turbo car with the trans cooler um the power steering cooler ac condenser it's just too much restriction in front of it to get adequate airflow to cool off this um car so this is the new setup let's um get this installed and we'll go to how we're going to wire this up so when i say this install is going to be simple it's like hardly a problem barely an inconvenience the cool thing about this fan is your ccrm can basically um, turn it on and off so your CCRM has three wires, a ground, um, low speed, high speed. Uh, I don't have the wires in front of me right now. I'll try to find some kind of diagram to put up, but basically the way I have mine wired is I use the ground and high speed signal. And so by me only needing two wires, the only thing I have to do is um, use this. This is the ground. Both of these are the ground wires for these fans. I'm tying it off to a common spot and I'm gonna tie this common spot to ground. So that's my ground for the CCRM. The other wires would be these two wires. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a fuse block, one wire in, two wires out. So the one wire coming in is gonna be from the CCRM. And I have uh, 30 amp fuses on each one of these legs. And each one of these legs is gonna to go to the 12 volts for the fan. Super simple. So we'll, I mean, honestly, I could mount this right here, but I'll probably mount that right there. And so we have our power coming in from the CCRM to this and then from each one of these goes to each fan. And that's it, that's all you really need as far as getting power to these fans. Now, the um, 
positive modulation signal. Both these fans have a PWM wire. I have both these tied together. And I'm going to run this wire to the controller that I'm gonna mount someplace in the car. So really, you know, you're making a connection here on your grounds. You're making a connection here for your um, PWM signal and you're making connections here for your um, 12 volts. Pretty simple. All right, that's pretty much it. You know, each one of these fuses is for a fan. I have my 12 volts from my CCRM coming in. It gets distributed. This is my common ground. I'm going to ground that off someplace. The only other connection I have now is just this um, PWM, but I have to get the fan installed to figure out how I'm gonna route this back inside the car. But from a electrical connection standpoint, that's all you gotta do. All right, everything right, wired back together. Just a brief recap, these two wires are going to each fan motor. This wire is coming from the CCRM. This is my ground wire to each motor. And that red wire is the pulse width modulation signal. Now, a couple of big things that you can do to help your cooling system is to box in your radiator. So this is just uh, pipe insulation I have going around the perimeter of this radiator. Even in the front, I have uh, some insulation just boxing in this whole area another thing burping your coolant system makes a big difference so let's uh, get this up to temperature i think 196 is when the fans cut on let me show you my um my little setup also it helps to have the car in the air when you burp Twist it. So, all right, I need to get some like um, Velcro and tape this down, but. Fans will not turn on until the CCRM gives it a signal. So let's get this temperature up to 196 and uh, we'll start playing around with the fans. started boiling over and it's a clear indication that um, I had some water weather in here but I need more antifreeze I think I didn't dump this cooling out so many times 
and added water. It's just too much water, not enough antifreeze. So I just need to go get some antifreeze. But we're at a 196 set point right now. to the gas station it's kind of hovering around 190 188 which is perfect for me all right just start the car up and this startup it was 200 let's see um, what it's gonna do as we start rolling you know I smell I smell antifreeze y'all I think I might have a leak, and I hope it's not this China radiator. Yeah. Temperature is actually worse than before. Plus I smell antifreeze. I think this radiator is leaking. Yeah, I think I had a problem with the radiator leaking. I don't see anything underneath, but you know, a small pinhole can cause uh, a drop in pressure. If um, your radiator isn't making pressure, then your uh, boiling point drops. So let's check under this hood and see if I can find anything. But I definitely can smell it. Oh, this might be a good thumbnail right here, y'all. Yeah, I definitely can smell it. I'm 
probably gonna have to go back to the stalker because it's not acting right. Yeah, it's, it's sitting at 200 right now. I can definitely smell it coming from up under here. I just think the radiator is weak, so. Let's head back to the house and close this video out. It's kind of disappointing. All right, back to the crib, and I think we have a problem with the uh, Chinesium aluminum radiator. It seems like uh, the cooling temperatures have gotten worse with that radiator in here. I can smell the coolant still, even like pulled into the garage. So we're gonna yank that out. And I just, I just wanna be clear on these cars. 200 degrees is not a issue. Um, operating temperature with these cars. Now, why I wanna keep my car around 190 degrees is because by this being turbo, whenever it, it it starts spooling, it's gonna generate more heat. And the the bigger um, threshold I have away from like 220, 230, the safer I'll be um, pushing this car or uh, doing some pulls. Cause you know, if I have the car out wherever I'm at and I wanna push the car, if the operation temperature is at 210, you know, if I, you know, do an eighth mile or quarter mile, quarter mile pull, you know, by the time I'm at the end of the quarter mile, you know, the coolant temperature possibly could have went up 10 degrees depending on what's the ambient, ambient temperature outside. So I would rather the car consistently operate at 190. So, you know, when I am in a situation in a hot, on a hot day where I want to push the car for a very long time, you know, I have that, that little headway to get to those um, higher temperatures, which is um, not healthy for aluminum heads. So we're gonna call this a L and we're gonna throw that stalker back in. The stalker was um, regulating a lot better than this aluminum one <laughs> with the other fans, so. I um, honestly think it's um, a leak. I'm not gonna pressure test it. Um, I can smell it. I'll probably look around, maybe get the car in the air and see if I can identify where the leak is coming from. But I might not even spend that much time doing that. You know, By the time I put that effort into doing that, I could have switched the stock radiator back in, which I know is good. And you know, sometimes the stock radiator is better, you know. Um, it's a less dense radiator, less um, area that the air has to flow through as opposed to a three row. Um, I don't know if um, I'm going to go back with a three row radiator after I do this. I honestly think with a two row and these fans, I'm not gonna have any issues. It's just um, something isn't um, sealed in the system and I just gotta, um, switch the radiator. I think I, I'm 95% sure that's what it is. So leave a comment down below. Tell me what y'all think about this. I actually think these fans are a great option for the S95 community. I'm sorry that I couldn't really um, do a stress test on this like I really wanted to, but we do have like a, a scorching day coming up. Um, I think this in a couple of days now. That's supposed to hit like 97 degrees. So that's gonna be a really good test with the stock radiator with these new fans. So if you wanna see how this is going to handle that extreme um, hot day, make sure you hit the bell notification because I'm um, recording these videos and I'm, I'm banging them out as quick as I can. So uh, do me a solid, tell a couple of people about the channel and until next time, God bless.